I'm here to help promote the upcoming City Winery show you have in New York. Are you doing that one solo or with a full band? That's with a full band. Full band and a great opening act and maybe even a special guest. We'll see. Cool. And will you be playing a lot from Work To Do? Because I know that's your latest album. Playing at least one song from Work To Do. I mean, this show isn't with the Blind Boys, so it's hard sometimes to do the songs that I wrote with them in mind but not have them there. Um, so we can do the title track and, may, and certainly others that we did together uh, of my older songs, but the three newer songs are kind of hard to do without the blind boys, but we usually do the title track no matter what. Does Work To Do still feel like a new album? Uh, how long did you spend making it? Well, we didn't spend very much time. It's only three new studio tracks and then six tracks that were just taken directly from a live performance we did for PBS uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so it really was, it started out as an EP. It was my intention to try to write a couple songs for them that we could collaborate on as singers. And um, once we heard the, the PBS show, we thought, well, maybe this could be a full-length album and make it sort of a hybrid, part recorded, uh, part, part studio, and part live. And um, overall, it, it just took a couple of weeks to put that together. And if I've done my research correctly, your album before that was a rarities compilation. Do you have a lot of songs in general just sitting around, a lot of old recordings? I don't. I don't. In fact, I was even surprised to find those. Um, the truth is I write so much less than I used to when I was younger. Um, back then I had 15, 20, 25 songs sitting around. Um, but now it's not the case. I have fragments of songs, but not fully completed work. Did all that ever lead you down the path of wanting to write for other artists? I know that you have done that, but some artists take that more seriously than others. I would say I take it less seriously than some and more seriously than others. Um, yeah, I, I usually don't do well with collaborations, whether it's for my, for my record or for someone else's. I think the, the collaborations I'm proudest of uh, that were not for me to sing are things I did, wrote for the Blind Boys and for the great soul singer William Bell. I contributed to his most recent record, which I think is brilliant. Um, so I, I don't go looking for that, but if it happens, often I find an assignment, an interesting way to get me back into writing. So somebody who's been following you a long time knows that the first album was the Grammy winner and the platinum seller and all that kind of stuff. And of course, there's all that pressure to have hit after hit. But at this point in your mm. career, I'm sure you can sustain yourself off of performing live and just doing a live uh, a new album every couple of years. I'm curious when things turned around for you that you could kind of be a cottage industry and not need to chase hits like that. Well, I think you just do it long enough. You know, people will keep showing up. Um, that's that's the key to me is can you make a live show work, make people remember it want to come back the next time, bring some friends that don't know you the next time. That's how you do it. You just keep playing. And um, hopefully you get better. Hopefully your audience grows. Um, but that's the key. Well, was the last album that you did in the traditional industry since uh, Join the Parade from 2007? That's the last full album of original material. Yeah. And in general, was that the last time that you felt kind of pressured to follow the typical thing of album tour, 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 album tour, that kind of cycle? No, man. I really, except for my first couple of records, I haven't really followed that rule at all. In fact, I've spent more years in my career off the road and not making music at all than I have making it. Um, it's only in the past, say, five to six years that I've been consistently on the road for a hundred shows a year. Before that, I would take off five, six, seven years, not do a gig, not make a record. Very often it was depression or anxiety or some form of a nervous breakdown that was taking hold. Um, but sometimes I was just in completely uninspired. So I've never felt like I could or should follow that cycle. It just wasn't possible in my case. So looking ahead at the rest of 2020, is it another 100 gig year for you? Probably, yeah. I think we've already got about 50 booked. So, and that's just through, I think that's just through May. So um, I'm going overseas with the Blind Boys. We're doing a couple shows together this summer. I'm doing some of my own shows there. Uh, but 
yeah, it's it's going to be another busy year on the road. And then I, I, I'm trying to arrange, and I think I can confirm that in the in, uh, at the end of 2020, I'm going to be doing a songwriters in the lounge show with Sean Colvin and David Crosby, just the three of us on stage together. So that's going to keep us busy too if we can make it work. Wow, that would be everything coming full circle. Because wasn't David Crosby on your second album singing backing vocals? He was. He was. In fact, I met him uh, the night I won my Grammy. So I went up to him to tell him how much I loved his song, Carry Me, along with many others. Um, but we've been close friends, fast friends since then. He's, he's recorded a couple of my songs uh, with Graham and without. And uh, I've been lucky enough to get him on my re- a couple of my records, too. And with doing 100 gigs a year, that, of course, isn't 100 days on the road. That's more like 150 days on the road once you, you know, do the logistics of all the flying in and flying out and travel days and all that. Is there much life for you outside of music and family? Are there other hobbies or businesses that you do? Not really. I mean, you know, I love playing tennis. It's a sport I used to play a lot. I can't play it very much anymore, but I love that. Um, Love going to see tennis events, too. I just think it's a beautiful sport. Um, I still listen to music. I'm always looking for, you know, new, new people that I haven't heard before that, that might move me. So I spend a little bit of time doing that. Um, nothing else is occurring to me in the moment. And I love, I mean, really, as, as if you're talking about family, I have two young boys, age 17 and 13. I have two older kids as well, but my boys are complete basketball fanatics. So one of my favorite things to do right now is to watch them play basketball on their various leagues and teams from school and outside of school. So I spend a lot of time when I'm home going to basketball games. So all that said, we've covered hobbies. We've covered the city winery and the gigs for 2020 and so forth. Uh, Are there recording plans for this year or is that really based on when you feel inspired? It's both. It's both. Yes, I have the plans and I'm learning slowly but surely how not to just wait for inspiration, but to actually wake up and get to work. Um, and sometimes it just sounds contrived and uninteresting and I leave it. Uh, sometimes I push through and keep working on something that sounds like it sucks, <laughs> but, um, that's part of the key, right? Just keep, just keep writing and hopefully something good will happen. Here's my, I have a few songs that I like very much. And if that becomes a, a full length record, I would be a very happy man. And two ask questions and then you're a free man. And the first one is you mentioned before <laughs> that you're consistently looking for new artists. Are there any recent mm-hmm. or new artists that really have taken you? You know, they're not new in particular because a lot of these people have put out nine, 10, 11 <laughs> records and I just haven't been aware of them. But um, in comparison with a lot of the stuff I've listened to from the 60s and 70s all my life, they're mm-hmm. new. So um, I love the Wood Brothers. I don't know if you know them, but I, I'm a big fan of their records. And there's a singer-songwriter who's got at least six or seven records. Uh, he's from Ireland, and his name is Foy Vance. You know that name? I know the Wood Brothers, but I don't know the second one you said, so I'm going to have to do some homework there. Yeah, man. He's, I can't remember the name of the record of his I love, but it has a song on it called She Burns. And his name is Foy, F-O-Y, Vance, V-A-N-C-E. I think he's terrific. So those are two. Homework to do, as I said. <laughs> so in closing, Mark, any okay. last words for the kids? <laughs> no last words for the kids. <laughs> last words, Stanley.